An orphan, raised on the streets of the DSC's territory, Louis has always had a fondness for animals and a certain aptitude for piloting. He's a close friend of Linda's, a member of the same elite mercenary clan. And while he enjoys having the chance to put his culinary skills to the test under challenging circumstances, as well as meeting the fluffy feral cats nesting in their hideout, their lack of escape plan is extremely troubling. Welcome to Team B, a war robot story. Episode two, a perfect stew. Don't move. Ash? For God's sake! Oh, good to see you too. Did you think that was funny? I could have killed you. Oh, nah, you wouldn't do that. You're far too... Oh, controlled. I could probably have done without the jujitsu, though. You knew the risks. Oh, I can't blame a guy for trying. Oh. What are you doing down here? Why didn't you come inside? What? And miss out on all the gossip? I do love being called a traitor. You left your radio on. I did try and stick up for you. Telling people I'd shoot them in the back of the head rather than straight up betray them isn't exactly sticking up for me. Okay, well, I tried to give them a good measure of your character. Right. Oh. Why are you down here in the hangar? It's gotta be warmer up in the control room. <laughs> Barely. Let's say I have some questions about Arnav. Kid's quick to point fingers. Mm -hmm. I wanted to see if his robot matches his story. It looks pretty battered up. I'm trying to figure out if this damage is from close quarters combat. Apparently you abandoned him to a two-on-one deathmatch. Two? I only saw one. He says two. I'd say by the marks, maybe an Ares and a Nemesis? Well, I still say one. You know what doesn't help his story? What? His black box is missing. Oh, shit. Why would he take it unless he has something to hide? Yeah, because your actions are totally trustworthy. Hey, what did I do? You vanished in the middle of the fight. As far as Louis and Arnov know, you're dead. Haven't you ever heard of running interference? And emphasis on the running. I didn't want to lead him back here, so I had to lead him all over the place. I was trying to keep everyone safe after this damned catastrophe. You're sulking that they think you're a traitor, aren't you? But you don't? I'm reserving judgment. Something about Arnav is off. Especially with this black box thing. And Louis? You say a word against Louis, you die where you stand. Fair enough. Hmm. Ugh, I hate this. When a simple job gets messy. Hard, I don't mind. But this whole thing is just... It's the exact opposite of what we prepped for. Did you really expect it to go smoothly? They offer an easy job to us for, what, ten times the going rate? And you have no questions? Oh, I don't know. I don't know anything anymore. When I said I'd expect you to shoot us in the back of the head, rather than sabotage a mission, that wasn't exactly a complaint. At least you're straightforward. But also, it's not like there's some kind of assassin's code of honor. You kill people for a living, people are gonna keep that in mind. Especially when a mission goes this wrong. Well, nobody's paid me to kill you. <laughs> because obviously you'd tell us if they had. Come on, we've set up camp upstairs. It's freezing out here, and Louis's cooking. There should be enough for you. It's not exactly five-star accommodation, is it? That's Earth for you, but it's warmer than outside, and it's dry. I'm back! And look who I found. Hey, it's me, the traitor. Fresh from stabbing you all in the back. Thought I'd come along and finish the job. <sighs> I'm... I'm obviously joking. You're supposed to laugh. Uh, sorry. We just... You were uh... Given your psychological profile and previous black box readouts, you had a 48.359% chance of having betrayed the party, and a 32.671% chance of having died in the field. Wait, and you didn't share this info before because... I didn't want to weaken morale. Hello, Ash. I am glad that you were in the 67.329%. Great. 
Well, at least my chances of survival were good. Actually, out of the four of you, your odds for survival were the lowest. Linda's was approximately 78.389%, Louis' approximately 91.264%, and Arnav's approximately 95.674%. Where'd you get these numbers from? And how come Arnav's is so high? He's a kid. Fresh out of college. I've been on a thousand missions. I haven't died yet. It's what the statistics say. And although he may look youthful, Arnav is more That's than enough, capable. That's enough, Atmeter. It's not helping. Okay, so if we could just calm down. The main thing we need to think about is the fact that this facility, this job, was not what we expected. I've been consulting the blueprints, and if what you say is true, it appears that the whole complex is filled with illegal underground extensions. Likely incredibly unsafe. I really am sorry that I sent you into such a hazardous building without the correct safety gear. App Meter, we're not pissed because we didn't have hard hats. We're pissed because we were ambushed. Yeah, those guys who attacked us, they turned up out of nowhere. They were camouflaged. They were waiting for us. They knew we were coming. We were expecting a walk in the park. We were paid for a walk in the park. Actually, I do need to cut in here on behalf of your employer. The amount that is due to be paid for this mission, if it is found to be successful, of course, is far above and beyond the rate for a usual walk in the park. This was ostensibly due to the highly confidential nature of the contents of the package, but I think it can be safely assumed that the rate also covers the higher stress activities you found yourself <laughs> performing in the field. And especially if your failure was due to the actions of someone within your group. Are you implying what I think you're implying? Are they going to stiff us on payment? I would assume that's part of the standard terms of any freelance contract. You fail your mission, you receive no payment. Are you kidding me? None of this was part of the contract! Oh, seriously? Come on! Hmm. What was in the box, Atmeter? Excuse me? The box. The whole reason for this mission? What was in it? Seeing as we failed, it's only fair to let us know. I'm actually not party to that information. <laughs> Typical. It was on a need-to-know basis, and I'm here to coordinate tactics and make plans. The contents of the crate doesn't figure into it. This wasn't some tiny lab that stumbled across a major discovery by mistake. This wasn't in the plan. <laughs> Is that why you bailed? What? You were meant to be watching my back. Instead, when I'm in danger, all I get is a someone's coming, and then radio silence. Then I have two high-powered robots coming for me in a very, very tight space. Have you ever had to fight a battle around containers of volatile uranium? Because it's not easy. I got you back in your bot in time, didn't I? And you made it here. Yeah, but Ravana... Arnav! I saw one robot go after you. Didn't see a second. And you want to know why I wasn't there fighting beside you? I had four damn phantoms on my tail. I had to lead them away from the facility. Especially seeing as these two had their hands full with a surprise ambush, I thought it was probably best to lead the others away so they didn't come back and pick you all off. Hmm. I spent most of the day teleporting around trying to knock them out. Yeah, I'm sure you did. What are you anyway, boy genius? Because I'm pretty certain you've got no record. You came into this claiming to be new to field work, but the way you handle that robot isn't the way a first-timer drives. And those extra mech arms on your bony shoulders aren't exactly standard issue. You're having a go because I built myself a couple of augmentations? Jealous. Why would I be jealous? You look like an idiot. But I don't drive like one. Four arms are better than two. <clears> hmm. <throat> Guys, Louis's right. We should eat. Oh, it's been a long day. Do you bring all this cooking stuff with you everywhere? Mm hmm. Hmm. What? An army marches on its stomach. Things would be much easier if you even tried to learn sign language. Right. Hmm. So, which one of those symbols was army? Hmm. Okay. And, uh, this one's marches? Okay. So, <clears throat> the chief problem we have right now is that someone here set us up. Uh, what? We're all here now. We're all thinking it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What if we're playing right into the traitor's hands, whoever they are? We're all in the same <laughs> place. All it would take to silence a lot of us would be a single round of bullets. Hmm. All right. Single round of stew. Oh, it's not constructive. Well, now you've wasted a perfectly good bowl of stew. Well done. It's not like we're stuck somewhere with limited rations for an unknown period. 
<laughs> what? He's saying that if he wanted you dead, he wouldn't waste paprika on you. God, I hate working with people. Hmm. <laughs> what? Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, he just said there's no more stew, so you'll have to make do with whatever you can get back from the floor. <laughs> oh, um, have you seen any water taps around? Nothing drinkable. Okay, I guess I can set up a condenser. We've got some bottled water. You think we'll be here that long? I mean, if Ash keeps throwing his food around, we'll starve to death pretty quickly. But I don't know. I want to be prepared. Do you bring a water condenser with you everywhere? I've got enough spares and Ravenna to rig one up. It's a pain to do, though. I think I'll deal with it tomorrow. Yeah. It has been a long day. So you keep saying. You should probably try and get some rest. <laughs> After you've just spent the last five minutes telling us that there's a traitor. Well, you can't operate a robot tired. So long as I'm plugged in, I should have no problem watching over you all. I'm... not sure how comfortable I am with that. Oh, um, were we supposed to bring sleeping bags? You brought a water condenser, but no sleeping bag. We've all got them. They're pretty standard. Oh. Oh. Uh. I've got a spare blanket. Try and keep your body off the ground. That's where you'll lose the most heat. Thanks. I suggest we don't leave App Meter watching us on his own. Hey! Just in case. We've got eight hours till daylight. I suggest we take two hour shifts. I'll do the first one. I've got a ton of experience pulling all nighters at the lab. Sure. Sleep well. Good night. This isn't a sleepover, Arnav. Go to sleep. You go to sleep. Ash may apparently be on their side. But can any of them really trust one another? Find out more next week in Team B. Team B is based on the War Robots game universe. Play now at wr.app slash story. You heard Kristen DiMercurio as Linda, Brandon G. Green as Louie, Nathan Blades as Arnav, Felix Trench as Apmita, and Graham Roat as Ash. You also heard the voice of Christopher Byron as narrator. Caroline Minx was the sign language consultant. The series was written, recorded, and directed by Beth Crane and Headley Knights of Battlebird Productions. Sound design was by Ilya Viktorov. Produced by Pixonic.